All right, in this video, we are following up on the conversation we had last time talking about choosing your team, building the right team around you. Something that came up was something that we had to handle, which is just how to deal with opinionated doctors. Specifically, maybe in the area of naturopaths who hate medical doctors and medical doctors who hate naturopaths. I don't know about you, but this has been our experience a lot as we've interviewed and, and worked with and done consults with a number of doctors as we worked to build our team and have worked to increase our team at different times, specific to different cancers. You'll often find doctors who are deeply opinion about their approach and their realm, the only valuable realm, and thus pushing away anything that is outside of their realm and, and speaking pretty derogatorily about that. Whether that's naturopaths who hold a view that traditional oncologists are poisoning, cutting, killing, their, their desire is to cause harm, that language is not useful. It's super broad and negative. It kind of closes conversation. I believe, as a general rule, people who become doctors care. And, and specifically, people who become doctors in the cancer realm, that's not glamorous. I believe that, in general, they care about their patients are trying to do what they believe to be best. Even if those things are ill-informed, not what's best in actuality, they believe it. So maligning someone's intention by talking very negatively about what they're trying to do or that they are financially driven or whatever it might be, isn't useful when having a team, right? Because we're trying to build a team. And so that isn't useful. On the other side, a traditional oncologist and an MD monk oncologist being deeply dismissive of anything other than their textbook treatments is uh, just about equally unhelpful, right? And when they say, and, and we had this with one of Rachel's first consults, a, a doctor who we started asking questions around, you know, what about vitamin C and what about diet changes? This and, and she was really dismissive. Essentially like, I don't care what you do. If it makes you feel better, like go follow your fairy tales. If it makes you feel emotionally better, go for it, but don't get in the way of my chemo treatment. That's what I'm putting into the textbook. Um, and that felt not helpful. Even if there was truth involved in it, I'm not even debating that, the way that that was approached was un. Okay, so we've got five tips for how to deal with this problem of deeply opinionated naturopaths or, or other doctors, we'll say doctors and about other doctors and other doctors. Okay, so five tips. Number one, it's important for you to understand their perspective is just a perspective. That's the first thing. They speak in terms of fact, black and white, this is how it is. It's apparently non-scientific. For you to understand and not get muddled and not get confused, their perspective is perspective. Now you can value that perspective or you can not value that perspective, but it changes the, the tone of the conversation to understand that however they're coming across, put it in their perspective. Okay, I need to consider this and, and now I need to think about what my perspective is in my rounding of my Number two, you do need to be your own best advocate. And so there are times when kindly and productively pushing back or pressing for something that you believe to be right is important. And so you understanding that you will likely know yourself and your situation best uh, and doctors who work in the cancer realm may understand their treatment best, but they don't understand you best and your scenario and your environment and your upbringing and, and everything that, that has been a factor for cancer developing. You are that expert. So you being your own best advocate is important as you're approaching these situations. Or three, choose your battles. I mean, it, sometimes um, we'll, we'll be in, in conversations where someone has, a, a doctor has something very painted to say about, I mean, this is kind of controversial and share our personal perspective, but we've been in conversation about vaccines. And one doctor who is deeply anti-vaccine I'm like, it is, it is poison. It is, I'm genetically modifying you. You should never even consider vaccines. Okay. That's one perspective. Another perspective from another doctor. Idiot. If you do not get vaccinated, 
I can't believe how much you don't care about other people and you are just asking to get sick and to die if you don't get vaccinated. Okay, those are two varying uh, opposite ends perspectives of doctors who are on our team actively and we value and we respect. When I say choose your battles, I mean, take their perspective and if you disagree with it, you don't need to be the one to change their perspective. You can just make your decision. So if you're trying to make a decision around vaccinations or chemo, surgery or whatever it might be, you can make your decision taking into account their perspectives and not have to fight against them to convince them that you're making the right choice. You just make your choice and let them know. Thank you for sharing your perspective. I appreciate it. I value your input in my plan. I feel that it is best to do like having considered the perspectives of the doctors on your team before. You need people that want to be on your team, not their own. And so when you're selecting people, or have selected people and you're considering what to do, it's important that they are there for your treatment. You are you are the center, you're the hub that the spokes go off to, to the different members of the team. And so if they are not acting as though they are on your team, but are, are rather acting as though it revolves around them, that becomes an unproductive team member. And, and I think, before firing and moving on, I think that's a, a helpful conversation to have. Say, hey, I'm feeling like you aren't on my team. I'm feeling like I've got multiple people that I'm trying to build around my treatment and my life that's on the line. And I want you to be on my team. I want to feel like you are a member who is who is contributing and cares about my livelihood and see what that conversation brings up. And hopefully there will be an empathy response. Hopefully you'll have a doctor who goes, all right, I'm going to step back. I appreciate you sharing that. I do care about you and want to be on your team. And it can change the tone of the conversation if it. All right, and then point number five, remember that each person is a part of your team. They are not the whole. They are a single spoke. They are, they are a slice of the pie that makes up your team. When that gets out of balance and you start thinking, about your your team of people as the whole, there can be a panic of like, well, I guess I have to let, like, if we're disagreeing or I'm not understanding something or the way that they're talking about other team members isn't useful, isn't, isn't doesn't feel productive, that, that when that gets out of balance, the panic can set in. When you go, you know what? They are a part of the team, but a part. And, and that gets back to the, use your battles. When you go, okay, you are a part of the team. I can listen to your perspective, I can consider it, and I can choose to not follow it. Because I'm the center of the team, because it's my life on the line, and you are a part of that team. So I can make that decision, and that's something for you as a member of my team to find a way to be okay with, even if you disagree, right? And that changes the, the direction of the conversation. Say, appreciate where you're coming from, I need to make my decision because you are a part of my team and I have to make my decisions because I am my own best advocate. I have to be, there's no one else that can be. So those are five tips for handling opinionated team members who are causing stress and difficulty, how they're sharing their perspective and how that feels derogatory towards spheres of influence that we have in our life and how to approach that in a productive way that hopefully brings the whole team together if you have other tips that you've used to tackle this exact problem, uh, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to have a conversation with you. Continue kind of rounding out what this looks like for all of us. Otherwise, be safe, be blessed, and we will talk to you soon.